Hello and welcome. Continuing on in my series of control center software reviews for the latest gaming laptops. Today, I'm going to show you the Gigabyte control center that is equipped in this Gigabyte Aora 17X for 2023 with the RTX 4080. So let's jump in. I'll walk you through the software. We'll look at the different modes and I'll talk about particularly all of the AI boost settings here and what you need to know in terms of getting the best gaming performance out of your Gigabyte Aorus 17X for 2023. So let's jump right in here. All right, so what we've got basically, there's a few different modes here that are predefined in the control center, but let's talk about some of the layout and tabs first. So initially when you land, you land at the home screen here. This is updated by default and installed when you first set up the machine. It does take a little bit of a while. Gigabyte actually installs quite a bit of things that it needs, you know, services, modules, etc., updates for this Gigabyte control center before your device becomes up and functional. But once it's, do it's done, you know, it's, it's actually very quick to open. It's fast loading. I have not had any issues here. So if I open this up, it opens very quick. I've not had any issues with it crashing or not opening or not, you know, activating certain modes, fan modes, profiles, everything seems to work. I don't have any issues from that regard whatsoever. Excellent experience with that. Thank you, Gigabyte. A, a software that's actually got the basics down right. Now let's look into what we have to offer here. So there is an SSD tool and I'm not sure if this is offered specifically for this device because this is equipped with an SSD from Gigabyte. I know that Gigabyte has made an entry into the uh, data storage space as of late and they are offering Gen 4 SSD uh, drives. And this one is equipped with the, S the SSD, uh, the Gen 4 SSD from Gigabyte, a one terabyte model for the Aora 17X, but it's a nice little feature to have. Uh, it can also do things like firmware updates to the actual drive. You can do a secure erase here. All right, let's go back to the home screen. The other one here is the update center, of course. When I, when I click on this button, this is the global update center for your Gigabyte Aora 17X device. This will actually take you to an update page. And if you hit the check button here, it checks for all of the software that's on this device. So as you can see here, there's quite a bit of software that Gigabyte installs once you actually set up your initial uh, Windows settings and you log in, create your account, set up your network, go through the onboarding process with Windows. The installs are quick. The updates are also quick. I have not seen any issues here where the software just kind of hangs or sits there. Now, if we go back to the beginning here, we've got an additional two pages here that are related to the actual device. So if you go to dashboard here, you'll see information like the serial number and additional information about the device. Not gonna show you that. If you go to the general page, however, this is where most of the time you will be hanging out and configuring your device in addition to the fan control and perhaps even RGB fusion if you're really a big RGB fan here. So what happens in the general page? There's, there's two different panes of setup here. One, you've got the AI boost at the top. I'll get to that in a moment. We've got a few different predefined performance modes. We've got a creator mode as, as to what they do, how much water they push to the CPU, the GPU, fan limits, thermal, we don't know. None of that is defined. I do not understand why these manufacturers continue to release software like this for professional and enthusiast level gamers without providing any of this information. It is so frustrating to me at this point. But anyway, let's move on. So we've got creator mode, turbo mode, gaming mode, meeting mode, which I have set right now because that basically silences the device, no fans, zero noise. And then we have a power saving mode. This is essentially if you want all of the battery boost settings that you can get to get the maximum amount of battery life from this device and you're away from the wall, go into this mode. Now, if we look on the other right-hand column here of this AI boost panel, we've got here some keyboard effects and this is where you can control whether you want just white backlight or RGB. That is a nice touch, thank you. Maybe when you're in the office, you don't want all of that bling, you just want white RGB or white backlight and that is possible here. The other thing you can do is adjust the backlight brightness. It's very, very impressive. You actually have 10 full levels of brightness and at full brightness mode, it is glaringly bright. And if I click here and I switch over to white, all of my LEDs will go white. That is a really nice feature for the office. I really like that. Thank you very much, Gigabyte. And then we have some panel color settings. You can actually turn down the temperature of the display or you can crank it all the way up to get more of a white, uh, blue light you know, experience for gaming so your colors are more punchy perhaps. Uh, that is a nice touch. Or you can turn this off entirely, which is what I've done. I don't need that. Or if I do need it, I always set it to the native mode, which basically gives you the tuned because this is a DCI-P3 100% coverage pre-calibrated 
panel from the factory from Gigabyte. The last thing here is the AI GPU boost. So this one basically allows you to select three different options. Again, what do they do? <laughs> I have no idea. I've been playing with all three of these settings. What is the difference between Gigabyte AI GPU boost and versus and Nvidia Dynamic Boost? Which should you use and when? It's unclear. So you're gonna be guessing a little bit. I've been playing around with these settings. And if you think about the combinations and permutations that are possible here, three different modes and the two different GPU boost settings here, plus the AI boost control, you've got maybe 30 different combinations to test through. So it really doesn't make sense why it needs to be this complicated. Why can't we just have a gaming mode, which gives us all of the performance of this laptop, a silent mode and a kind of a balance. I'm just doing some stuff. I don't want it to be very, very poor and slow and the brightness to be tuned all the way down, but I also don't want to strain my battery life. So I do not understand why we need this many modes. Now let's come back to the AI boost button here. So when we click this mode, I'm not sure, really sure what's happening because it doesn't tell you anything other than the on-screen display in the bottom right here, which is AI boost. So if I turn this off, you get another display, on-screen display, which is AI boost off. And of course you can combine that, or so you'd think, with any of these modes. So let's say if I'm in creator mode and I'm working on editing my videos, I wanna enable some AI boost, right? No, you cannot do that. Because what happens is as soon as you go to creator mode, first of all, the labeling is so confusing because each mode here actually says on the on-screen display, AI turbo, AI creator mode. If these are all AI tuned, why do I need a specific extra button which says AI boost? Because if I turn this off, it basically clears any mode setting that I have enabled. And it doesn't say, if I select the turbo mode for example, and then select AI boost, it doesn't say AI boost on turbo mode, it just says AI on. What does that mean? We don't know. But what I have found in my testing though, is if you're looking to game, you can try either the gaming mode or the turbo mode, doesn't matter. You're not gonna get more than 140, maybe 145 watts out of this GPU, the RTX 4080. In order to get even close to the 175 watts that's promised in this device, you need to have AI boost on, and then it doesn't really matter what mode you're in. Because what the AI boost mode will do, it will set the fan profile, it will set the CPU profile, it will dynamically adjust the GPU profile to give you the right wattages so it can actually give you the performance that you want. I know that Gigabyte has some partnership going with Microsoft to send lots of data, I'm assuming, from your laptop to Microsoft so they can tune stuff and process things in the cloud before they send back which settings are to be applied. You know, it's still a mystery, it's a black box, there's no documentation. There, even the help button, all it really does is it gives you two steps of, here, you can click this and you can click this and that is it. There's no documentation, there's no manual. If you look at the manual on the Gigabyte website for this device, download it, you will not find anything that specifically talks about what these modes do, what is AI boost, and how these things all function together. It's literally a guessing game, and I've spent hours trying to figure out which modes do what. So Gigabyte, you started off strong. There were some very, very good points for buying a Gigabyte laptop. I'll get to those in my full review. But then when I got into these modes and started gaming and testing and seeing that, hey, I'm, built, I'm still stuck at 140 watts, I was very, very disappointed because then again, I would have to go and muck around with these settings to try to figure out, hey, where is my power and my performance levels? Besides laboring that point, you can turn on AI boost mode or off. It's up to you. If you select any of these modes here, what they will do is adjust the uh, keyboard backlight settings. For example, if I select gaming mode, it leaves the backlight on. If I go to turbo mode, it turns the backlight off. I'm assuming it's to help reduce any extra heat that may be generated by these LEDs being illuminated that are powering the RGB backlit keyboard. Uh, the other thing is if I go to meeting mode, it does enable my white backlight for my office setting and it switches over to you know the white backlight and turns the brightness down. I can of course adjust this and when I go back to a different mode and come back to it, it actually remembers my settings. So that is at least helpful. Thank you very much for that gigabyte. When I do go to the gaming mode though, my keyboard light is on, my effect is on, and I can select my effect over in RGB Fusion. We'll talk about that in a moment. I, it remembers my panel color settings. And of course, here I can adjust the GPI, GPU modes, right? The boost modes, but guess what? I'm in gaming, I no longer have the Gigabyte AI GPU boost mode. What gives, Gigabyte? What, what, what is this? How, how are we supposed to understand and decipher your application here? If I go back to turbo mode, it's, it remembers this setting, but now if I select on my AI boost mode, 
it cranks up the keyboard backlight. So it's just overridden my settings with its own AI mode. It's like a super mode above all of these other defined performance modes here. On the right hand side, you've got some quick settings toggles. These are kind of handy. Uh, for example, there's an AI, uh, AI eye care, which automatically using the infrared sensor in this device turns down the brightness. I'm assuming checking based on the ambient light that's available in the room. Right now, for example, it turned it all the way down to 19. If I turn it off, it will leave it at that setting though. It doesn't crank it back up. So that's a little bit of an annoyance. Uh, there is a very nice on-screen display for pretty much every function that you can control with this Gigabyte laptop. So that is very, very nice. And the on-screen display works flawlessly and works well. It's informative, it's easy to see. Uh, the other thing you can adjust here, so if we turn the brightness back up, there we go. Yeah, you can also do it here, which it didn't change. I do not know why, anyway. Yeah, if I set it to on, it's lowering my brightness and you can see the on-screen display here that it's rolling the brightness down. If I turn this off, it doesn't roll the brightness back, but I can use this to crank the brightness back up. Uh, and the other thing you can do here is adjust the charging modes. If you want to, for example, be plugged in all the time and you're gonna be using your battery very little, it's nice to play with those settings because then you can go and customize the charging level so that you can prolong your overall battery life. There's a display output switch. If you open this, this is just a built-in uh, Windows display switching. Nice to have, I guess, but you can always access that just by clicking down here in your start menu. Uh, there's a Dragon Network tool. If you open this, I'm not really sure what it does because I've clicked on it many times and it just says Dragon works no normally, so I'm not sure what that is. I guess it's some sort of diagnostic that Gigabyte has built into this device to run against the built-in Ethernet or the Wi-Fi. Uh, the other thing you can do is turn on the night light. So this will kind of yellow your entire screen and brings down the temperature of the panel so that if you're working late at night, it's not as straining on your eyes. Uh, this one is just a shortcut to NVIDIA control panel. On, on screen display is a switch. If you don't want all these little displays coming on the screen. So for example, if I turn this off, and I crank this on, it will lower the brightness, but I no longer get any display telling me what is actually happening on my device. There's also power modes here. These are power plans. You can select between them and they will adjust basically the brightness as well as the fan profile and some other issues that are all tied together. You have volume control in here. You could also control this with the function keys on your keyboard or with the Windows control panel sound volume. And wireless just toggles the Wi-Fi off and on. Same with the Bluetooth switch up here. Now that's the general tab. If you go to the dashboard, as I mentioned, it gives some information about this device. If you look at the CPU here, it names your CPU the i9-13900HX in this device, 4080-12 gigabyte, and it's giving some basic metrics and stats about what is happening with the CPU, the memory, and the GPU utilization, as well as temps. At idle, you can see in meeting mode, the temps are fantastic. This thing is cool to the touch, no matter where you touch it. It's a beautiful device. Uh, there's some SSD health info here, battery charge level, it's plugged in right now, fully charged, and it gives you the NP RPM speeds for the fans, as well as tells you what battery plan that you're on. Now let's go over to fan control. So here we've got again, five, five fan modes that are predefined. If we go to power, and we can see here that there's a fan curve, which changes depending on which mode we are in. So if you go to eco, it's practically silent. You won't get any uh, activation of the fans until it really kicks up into high gear and you start stressing that CPU. Normal is, you know, the default mode. It's kind of a combination between GPU and CPU fan based on uh, what's happening on the device. By the way, this device has four fans in it for cooling and turbo mode basically ramps up. So you can see here that it's bringing the temperature down and it's ramping up the fan speeds as with each mode. And then finally there's customized mode. So this one has two, two specific uh, ways you can do customization of the fan modes on this thing. There's fixed mode, which means you can just drag the bar up and down. And this will give you just a variable percentage. I like to just crank this up to 100% if I wanna do some testing. And then there's a dynamic mode where you can go in and play with this curve and you know, to your heart's content, customize your temperatures and RPM activations at all different levels. Hit apply and it will save it. Or you can also hit default and it'll go back to uh, the default mode. And lastly is the RGB fusion. So this one controls the RGB lighting for your per key RGB backlit keyboard. It has some pretty nice effects. And like I said, with the 10 levels of brightness, this is excellent. Uh, anyway, so that is all to say, I think about uh, this. And if you go here into the settings, uh, settings button, you can have the Gigabyte Control Center automatically start with your Windows machine. 
nice to have or when you minimize it it goes to the system tray rather than closing uh, you can also do some logging here and there's some just legal information and there's a really nice information here which is a reset this will actually reset all of the data that it's collected on the ai profile mode and basically clear that data for you and then start gathering the data again from there on to basically tune your laptop. So that is a quick overview of the Gigabyte Control Center. It's a nice improved and polished version of the Gigabyte Control Center software. Furthermore, from this control panel, there is no possibility to under undervolt your CPU and certainly not overclock any of the components on your GPU. What I have been able to achieve here is using Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, I am able to adjust the power levels pl1 and pl2 of the i9 13 900hx much like i did on the acer predator helio 16 and with that play around with the power levels to see how far i can push the gpu if i limit the cpu's wattage ultimately the failure of these modes is to give you one the data about what they're doing number two allow them to be configurable or adjustable at the granular level cpu gpu overclocks temperatures thermals all those things so I would really wish that Gigabyte would add those things with a software update or perhaps next year with the 2024 iteration. But for now, it's a useful control center. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you found any of this content useful or informative, please like and subscribe and also share across your social media channels to help grow this channel and see you in the next one.